Hi, I am Dave. Salesforce consultant at Cloud Analogy Softex. My company provides expert Salesforce consulting for solutions like application and plugin development, integrations, data migration for big small companies, Salesforce partners, and independent Salesforce vendors or ISVs. Today I am going to brief some life-saving tips for any Salesforce developers which can be boon for you if you are into consistent activities like development, code testing and deployment in Salesforce environment. So let's start with the tips. Trigger. We have few points, which we are going to discuss under this checkpoint. The first point is. Less code in Trigger. Business logic should be written in Apex classes and purpose of writing a trigger should be to divert the various update, insert, delete, before, after control flows to the correct Apex class. Context specific handler methods should be there in Apex classes. Second point is, bulkification. While developing a fresh trigger we should always think of the possibility that the records in the object can be inserted, updated, deleted by a user in bulk using API, data loader tool or custom multiple edit page etc. Third point is, null check. This is a very basic check which every developer learns in the course of testing triggers which they developed. Fourth point is, one trigger for one object. Creating multiple triggers on the same object will cause warnings in checkmarks code review for app exchange. Fifth point is, self-looping triggers. Beware of this and make sure you use a static field in class to verify the trigger is not getting called multiple times. Sixth point is, web service callouts can't hit more than 10 callouts at a time. Design patterns are good solution for this. And the last point is, trigger best practices. To know more about trigger best practices, by using this link you can follow the guidelines defined by Salesforce itself. Data model. We have few points to discuss under this checkpoint are as follows. The first point is, data model. Make sure that the data model is planned way ahead before deployment. Final stage data model changes may cause business logic changes too. Second point is, data types of fields. Data types of fields should be chosen wisely. Remember once a field is having certain values in production and if you wish to change the data type of that field then all the record values from that field may get lost. Third point is, data migration. Data migration can be a one-time task and very crucial to the initial setup so taking care of existing objects, fields and business slash programming logics is must. Fourth point is, Planning a date to migration. Planning a date to migration start the migration with few records only and this can lead into few tweaks in data model. Visual force. We have few points, which we are going to discuss under this. The first point is. Structured query language. Make sure the query is having a limit or an intelligent where clause. A query can be written in Salesforce in multiple ways. Second point is, design. If the logic permits then use components and divide the screen in separate pages or wizard steps. Third point is, static resources. Use static resource for all the CSS and images. Separate jQuery, JavaScript files will also be good. Fourth point is, check view state. Make sure that the Salesforce view state size is always in check. Fifth point is, action tags. The lesser number of action tags the less will be call outs to Salesforce controller server. Most of the simple business logic slash validations can obviously be carried to client side scripting. And the last point is, 
Best Practices To know more about best practices for improving visual force performance, by using this link you can follow the guidelines defined by Salesforce itself. Test Class We have few points, which we are going to discuss under this. The first point is, check the version of test class properly. Make sure the version of test classes are above 22.0 or later will be best. Second point is, use of mock code coverage. For urgent deployment, one may tend to use mock code coverage of huge dummy class but this should be avoided. The third point is, bulk testing. Bulk testing should always be done for objects having triggers. Fourth point is, business and scenario based test classes. The purpose of writing test classes is to test the business logic being executed correctly by your code without any failures. There could be several test functions in a classes to test all the user scenarios end to end. Fifth point is, positive and negative testing. Make calls to methods using both valid and invalid inputs. And the last point is, Apex code test methods. To know more about test methods, by using this link you can follow the guidelines defined by Salesforce itself. Web service. We have few points, which we are going to discuss under this. The first point is, SOAP. We should have the clear understanding of WSDL we are going to use in Salesforce. Web service, parameters, range and return value. SOAP user interface is one of the best desktop based tool to do a dummy test. Second point is, WSDL file size. The limit may sometime demand trimming, we'll need WSDL expertise for this job. Third point is, REST services. The services resources should be identifiable and a developer should be aware of the methods to call, their consequences and return results. Fourth point is, types of dummy testing tools. One can always use various online tools to do this dummy testing. There are various tools available to use, some of them I'll be mentioning here. Postman SOAP UI Testing Wiz SOAP Sonar Test Maker Run Scope Etc. Be sure to search more over the internet. Deployment We have few points, which we are going to discuss this topic. The first point is Link Mapping Make sure that final deployment is having the correct integration mappings, external URL mappings. Break time equals ones, greater than. Second point is, about code coverage. Code coverage 75%, Salesforce mandates 75% overall code coverage and greater than 0% code coverage for triggers. We should tend to get code coverage above 95% for a future healthy and less maintenance OG. The third point is, hard coding production. Don't try hard coding ids until it is absolutely necessary. In live production OG we may have a situation that we are not able to define a page component or record or specific element by name or unique id then we can take the help of hard coded ids. The only situation I remember is pre-populate some fields or do some tweaks on VF pages in production. Fourth point is, check code deployment properly or not. Always make sure that the components being deployed to production are on the latest version or same version as of production. Application development. We have few points to discuss under this checkpoint are as follows. The first point is choosing application prefix carefully. While creating a managed package prefix can be set only once. 
second point is, testing before release. Test for all the Salesforce additions before release. Third point is, create a Loha application. For professional edition, Aloha apps don't count against your system limits for apps, tabs, and objects. Fourth point is, ensure your testing complete with beta version. Always complete your testing with beta version of the application rather than jumping on to release. Fifth point is, deprecate the beta version once released version ready. Remember to deprecate the beta version application once you have a released version ready. Hope these checkpoints will help you in becoming a great Salesforce developer.